Good morning, everybody. Let's stand and join together in singing Days of Elijah. Please be seated. Well, we are glad to see you here this morning and glad to gather and worship in the God's house today. What a joyful and beautiful day God has blessed us with, and we are glad that you have chosen to share it with us. If you are worshiping with us in person this morning, we'd like to invite you to complete the tear-off section of your bulletin and drop it in the offering plate so that we can know who is with us this morning. If you are our guest, we want to say a special welcome to you, and we are so glad to have you worshiping with us. If you are watching us online, we'd love for you to leave us a comment or maybe share our worship service on your page so that others can worship with you this morning. But wherever you are and whatever you're doing, we are glad that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. While you're doing those things, I want to draw your attention to several announcements on the back of your bulletin. Um, first, this week is our small group meetings for our discernment process, so you can find those dates and times there on your bulletin. We are asking you to please sign up so that we can limit the uh, small groups to where we can have a conversation about the future of our church, and so we'd love for you to be a part of that. I, I'd like to see every member of Grace to participate in that, and so we'd like to encourage you to do that. 
Also, it's hard to believe, but we are only a couple of weeks away from Easter. So if you would like to purchase an Easter lily in honor or in memory of a loved one, then the order forms are in the um, table at the back as well as where you picked up the bulletins. So please do that so that we can have our sanctuary beautiful for Easter in just a few weeks, and they are $10 each. Also note that um, the Friendship Club is scheduled for Tuesday, April 4th. We'll have the game starting at 10 and fellowship meal at noon, so you're invited to be a part of that. So those are some of the things that are going on in the life of our church. Are there other announcements that we need to mention this morning? Okay. I'd like to invite you then to take your bulletin or turn your attention to our screen as we open in prayer this morning and as we join together in prayer. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, who blesses your children with new life, resurrect us through faith in your Son, that life may become a living experience of joy and happiness. You showed Ezekiel that your spirit was a life-giving force. Fill us with it now, that we too may look beyond every valley of death and despair with new eyes of hope and faith. In the name of the one who himself rose from the dead, we pray. Amen. And now I'd like to invite you to stand and join with me as we affirm our faith together. Our affirmation of faith is from 1 Corinthians and Colossians this morning. You'll find it on page 888 in your hymnal or the words will also be on your screen. I'll begin and then invite you to join with me. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women, then to Peter and the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen. may be seated as our ushers come to receive our offering this morning and as they are coming let us join together in prayer oh lord we are so grateful for the day that you've given us the beautiful day and the sunshine the opportunity that we have to gather in your house lord to worship you and to give you the glory that you deserve and so, Lord, we invite your spirit to come into this place and move among us. And, Lord, as we consider all of your many blessings, all the things that you have given us, we are so very grateful. And so now, Lord, as we give you back a portion of what you've given to us, we ask your blessings on these gifts that we give, that others might know the good news of Jesus Christ through them. And it's all these things we ask in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior.
ask that you please remain standing as we join together in singing, O oh God, our help in ages past. Please be seated. As we come to a time of prayer in our service, I do want to remind you of the prayer list that is on the back of your bulletin. I'd like to encourage you to take that home with you and continue to pray for those folks throughout the week. Um, I do have a couple of things that I want to draw your attention to. Um, Linda Moyers is out of the hospital and back home. She uh, has had a biopsy and is awaiting results, so we want to continue to pray for her. Also, you'll see listed there the family of Norma Utley. That is Jana's resident, a student teacher whose grandmother passed away in Georgia this week, so we want to remember her family, especially today. And um, we also want to pray for all the tornado victims in Mississippi and Alabama and other places. Uh, last I saw that there was um, 26 that lost their lives with those tornadoes this weekend. So we want to pray for them and for um, their recovery as those towns were impacted so severely by the, the weather. And of course, um, as we've already mentioned, I do hope that you'll pray for our discernment process as this is a very important week in that process with the small groups and our discernment team will be meeting tomorrow night to prepare for those small group meetings so um, so please put that on your prayer list also so those are some of the things that are on our my heart and mind this morning as we gather for worship are there others that you know of who are in need of our prayers today Okay, all right. Okay, so we'll pray for Mike. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, for Bob Bryant. Okay. Others this morning? Iva Kilpatrick. Okay. okay, any others? Okay, then let us join together in prayer. Oh Lord, it is good to be in your house. Lord, we are grateful for the time that we have to set aside to worship you. Lord, we pray that you would forgive us when we come into your house and 
our life feels like it is filled with dry bones. Maybe it's been a, a difficult week, a rough week. Maybe we are anticipating difficult times that are yet to come. But Lord, what we know is that through your spirit, we have hope. And so, Lord, as we hear the, your word today from the book of Ezekiel and, and how his situation seems so hopeless, and yet, Lord, through your power and through your spirit and through your word, things turned around for Ezekiel and for your people. And so, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would come into this place, would lead us and guide us, that you would fill us anew with your breath and spirit and wind, that we might live fully as you have designed us to be. Lord, we pray that you would fill us with your spirit so that others might see Jesus in us. And Lord, as we gather for worship, may you move in and through us. And Lord, as we gather for worship on this day, we have many things that are on our hearts and minds. Maybe it is about those that are sick, maybe facing surgery, maybe recovering from surgery, maybe waiting on test results, or maybe just under the weather. Lord, we lift them up to you today, and we pray that into each of their situations they would know your grace and peace. Lord, for others who have lost a loved one to death, we ask that you would surround them with your love and care and that you would allow us to be your instruments of help and comfort and peace for them. And Lord, as we gather in your house, we have other worries and concerns on our hearts and minds. Maybe it is about the future or maybe it is about work or school or friends or family. But Lord, whatever it is, what we know is that you have the power to intervene and to move in our hearts and lives. And so, Lord, we invite you into this place today, and we invite you into our lives. Come in and move among us that we might truly worship you in truth and in spirit. And it's these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would the children come down for the children's sermon? questions for you. Do you like science? Do you like science? Okay, this will be up your alley. What do you know about skeletons? They're made of bones. They're made of bones. What else can you tell me? They're dead. That's what I was looking for. Can they move on their own? They can't move on their own. Um, is there anything inside of them? What about their tendons? Are their tendons still there? Still on the move? Mm -mm. Well, today's scripture, there was a valley that was nothing but skeletons, nothing but bones. So what do you think was going on there? They probably was dead, huh? Could they move? You think it was quiet? You think anything was going on? No. But God told this man, a prophet named Ezekiel, he said, go tell those bones to stand up. And Ezekiel said, uh, they're dead. They're not going anywhere. God said, go do it. I said, do it. Go do it. And you know what happened? Any idea? What do you, what do you think happened? They did because God told them to stand up and they stood up. Ezekiel didn't have a whole lot of faith that it could happen. He didn't have any hope. But guess what? God said, mm -mm, I'm telling it to happen. So you know what that tells us? Sometimes do you think there's no hope? Do you think something's not going to happen? There's no way that could happen. Do you give up? sometimes yeah should we give up who's in charge God and if he tells us and if he says it guess what it's gonna happen and so we need to be like Ezekiel and when God said you can question him but don't not too much 
You need to say, okay, I'm going to do what you say. Because there's hope. There's always hope. Okay? So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. And thank you for these boys and their love for you. Father, um, as we go through the sermon, help us to remember that there is always hope in you. No matter, even if we're dried up old bones, that you can do something with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, choir. Well, over the last several weeks, we have been looking at some Old Testament scriptures to lead us through this time of Lent. And today we come to the book of Ezekiel chapter 37. Uh, many of us are familiar with this scripture, the Valley of Dry Bones. And so um, I invite you to hear the word of the Lord from the book of Ezekiel. I'll start in verse 1. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath into you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come, breath from the four winds, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. As you know, we have just returned from a trip where we were able to see four national parks in four days. It was a great trip. And back in 2018, we took another trip and we visited four national parks on that trip and two national monuments. We covered 4,500 miles from northwest Arkansas and then back. And one of the places we got to visit was Yellowstone National Park. And while we were there, I got to see buffalo this way, caught in a bison jam, as they are called at Yellowstone National Park. And the bison, as you can tell from the picture, they walk down the road like they own the place, which they do, because humans are just visitors in those wild places. All you can do is sit in the car and wait, or drive slowly behind the buffalo until they decide to get off the road and return to the green grass to fill their stomachs. I think we waited in this bison jam for about a half hour before they decided to go somewhere else. But if you lived in the 1880s to 1890s, this picture is probably what you knew of Buffalo. This picture comes from Michigan Carbon Works in Rockville, Michigan in 1892. In the 1870s and 1880s, Buffalo were hunted unmercilessly and tens of millions, let me say that again, tens of millions buffalo were hunted down and killed for their hides and their meat. Buffalo tongue was a delicacy. 
Afterwards, the bones were picked up and shipped east where they could be made into fertilizer or glue or bone china or other products. By 1892, when this photograph was taken, there were only 456 buffalo remaining in the wild. Of course, not only was this catastrophic for the buffalo population, but for our Native American brothers and sisters who depended on the buffalo herds. But thanks to conservation efforts, the bison has made an astounding comeback. You can now take a picture of a buffalo like this one, sitting in the seat of your vehicle. This picture was taken, a buffalo that walked in front of us by probably five or 10 feet. Today, there are roughly 350,000 plains bison in production herds, 30,000 in public herds, and around 20,000 in tribal herds. Through the efforts of conservation, you and I can still view the buffalo in their native habitat. New life from old bones. You see, in our passage from Ezekiel, the children of Israel are in a difficult time. What we know about Ezekiel is that he lived about 2,600 years ago. He witnessed the terrible siege of Jerusalem by the Babylonians in which Jerusalem finally fell in 587 B.C. He spent years in exile along with other Jewish leaders in what is now modern-day Iraq. The people of Israel felt as if they were dry bones. They felt that God had abandoned them, dead, hopeless. And yet in our scripture, God takes Ezekiel through this, to this valley of dry bones to show him and us that with God nothing is impossible. The Lord brings Ezekiel out to view the wasteland and there's nothing but bones there. And this is not just a surface tour, but a very intimate tour. The, the Bible tells us that God led Ezekiel all around the valley, and there were many, very many bones lying there, and they were very dry. It, as, it is as if, though the Lord needs Ezekiel to see not just the bones, but to sense that the life that was once present, and the hopelessness that now exists. So what can we learn from this passage today that can provide hope for the hopeless? The first thing I want you to see is that dry bones must come alive to God. Dry bones must come alive to God. So this valley and the Israelite situation came about because of a 13-year war between the Israelite king named Zedekiah and the Babylonian king named Nebuchadnezzar. And in that war, one third of the Israelites' population starved to death, one third were killed in battle, and a third were carried off to Babylonian captivity. In other words, the Israelites' homeland was left empty and bare. The Valley of Judah, all it contained was the decayed bones of slain victims denied the decency of a burial. Their flesh picked clean by the birds of the air. So this vision of Ezekiel, yes, it's a something imagined, but it was also the reality of the Israelite people. And it's entirely possible that Ezekiel caught a glimpse of such a valley as he was being led away in chains from his homeland. There were a great many bones, and they were very dry. The valleys are real, and the bones are many. Anyone who tells you that when you follow God, life is going to be easy, it is not the truth. That even though we follow God, even though we are followers of Jesus, we still have tough times. And so it was for the people that Ezekiel served. Maybe you have felt like dry bones. Those very dry bones that lie in the valley. 
I imagine that most everyone sitting here today can remember a place in their lives that felt like the valley of dry bones. Maybe you even feel that way today. Most of us don't need to look too far to find the wasteland in our own lives where the bones lay in piles all around and they are very dry indeed. Maybe there's a friendship or a relationship that has ended in a harsh way. Maybe there is a quarrel that was unresolved and it resulted in the breaking of a relationship. Maybe the bones of a once tender love lay bleaching in the sun. Maybe it was a simple mistake. But whatever it is, we know what it is like to have the piles of bones in the wasteland of our lives. Each of us can feel the dryness that comes as those bones dry and bleach in the sun when the spirit withers away and goes away. It is vast and painful and overwhelming. We know what it is like to have dry bones. Maybe our faith has even felt like that at times. I know that at times mine has. Those days when you, when you pray and you wonder if your prayers are even making it above the ceiling or where they are going. But the good news for us is that we worship a God that has the power to bring the dead back to life. Who has the power to revive dry bones. And if God can revive dry bones in that valley, then imagine what God can do with us. So when we come to worship, it is much more than a social meeting, even though getting to see one another and shake hands and give hugs and, and visit with friends and family is part of it. But we gather on Sunday to worship the almighty God, the creator of the universe, the one who has come to give us life. And if God can create the universe, if God can breathe new life into dry bones, then know that God is able to meet you wherever you are. If we gather for worship and we gather in this place and we sing the songs and we read the scripture and we hear the word and we leave the same way, then we have failed because we gather to allow God to move in our hearts and lives. So how can we come alive in a world that often seems so dead? We come alive by trusting in Christ as our Lord and Savior. John chapter 10 verse 10, Jesus says that I have come that they might have life and might have it more abundantly. So if we want to come alive, then we must first allow God to enter into our hearts and lives and bring us back to life. Secondly, I want you to see that we must also be obedient. We must be obedient. Now, I, I want you, we know this scripture, but I want you to imagine that you are Ezekiel. The people are in captivity. Ezekiel's in captivity. The promised land is empty. There's nothing but bones there. It is the worst of times. So God takes him to this valley of dry bones, and now God speaks to Ezekiel, can these bones live? <laughs> I would have said, no way, Lord. Look at those bones. They are everywhere, and they are so very dry. They have been dead a long time. They cannot live. But Ezekiel doesn't respond like that. Ezekiel's response is, Oh, Lord God, you know. Ezekiel, in essence, is saying, Well, I don't see any way, but maybe you know a way. Having responded in faith, the Lord says to Ezekiel, Prophesy to these dead bones and say, Oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now, I must tell you, I have been preaching for over 20 years, and I have preached to some audience, not of dry bones, but of people that seem to be already dead. Oh, good. Y'all are alive. Good. <laughs> 
But I think if God asked me to preach to dry bones, I would laugh. Any preacher knows that it is no use to speak to dead people. And yet, that's exactly what Ezekiel does. He preaches to the dry bones and great things happen. Now, maybe only a minister would ask this question, but I am curious about what Ezekiel said in his sermon. I mean, I wish what I said would have the same result as what Ezekiel said. So what do you think Ezekiel said in the Valley of Dry Bones when called to prophesy and to preach? Have you ever wondered about that? I sure would like to know. I wish that Ezekiel told us the content of his sermon because I'd like to copy it to tell you the truth. Ezekiel, he could have done the Methodist thing. He could have called a meeting of the bones. They could have gotten together to reminisce about the days when they were lively and alive and probably the jawbones, especially like chewing on such nostalgia. Or he could have taken a consultant approach. All you introverted bones, get over there. You extroverted bones over here. You feeling bones, if there are any left, huddle close to me. You reasoning bones, put your heads together over there. And, you know, those head bone connected to the neck bone, neck bone connected to the, well, you get the idea. But maybe Ezekiel did it more directly. Maybe he just said, thus says the Lord, get together, work together, live, make a difference where you are. Like a prophet with authority and a priest with responsibility, you hip bones join up with the leg bones, you leg bones fit in with those foot bones. We've got work to do. Get it together and let's go. But what I want you to remember is Ezekiel had enough faith. He did what he could. He used what he had. He had enough hope, enough love, enough courage to preach in the most unlikely place of all the earth and to proclaim hope when hope was gone. I wonder if we have the same kind of faith. To have hope for the hopeless, we must look to God And we must be obedient like Ezekiel. We need to pray for God to move. We need to be obedient and read and study the Bible. To be obedient and to attend worship and Sunday school. Be obedient to tell others about what God is doing in our lives and in our church. If we want to have hope, we must be obedient like Ezekiel. The third thing I want you to see is that we must listen for God to speak. We must listen for God to speak. You see, the bones, they heard Ezekiel's words, but it was God who was doing the speaking. It is my prayer that every week when you come, you would hear my words, but you would also hear God through them. Ezekiel speaks the words, but they are God's. They are the words that God tells him to speak. You hear my voice, but my prayer is it would be God's word that you hear. The thing I love about God is that he speaks in such a number of different ways if we are paying attention. Sometimes I hear God through the words of others. Sometimes I hear God through music or song. Sometimes I hear God through the beauty of the day or a sunrise or a sunset. God is speaking. May we have the ears to hear. Novelist Anna Quinlan tells a story that she once did on homeless persons and how they survive in the winter. And in the midst of her research for her story, she she met a homeless man on the boardwalk at Coney Island. The homeless man told her about his schedule and what it was like panhandling the boardwalk when all of the summer crowds were gone and very few people came. He told of sleeping in a church when the temperature got below freezing and hiding from the police amongst the tilt-a-whirl and the cyclone and some of the other rides. But he told her that most of the time he stayed on the boardwalk facing the water even when it got cold and he had to wear his newspapers after he read them. 
Anna asked him, why don't you go to one of the shelters? Why don't you check yourself into the hospital for detox? And the man just stared out at the ocean and said, look at the view, young lady. Look at the view. Anna says, and now in some small way, I try to do exactly what he says. I try to look at the view. Words of wisdom from a man with not a dime in his pocket, no place to go, nowhere to be. Look at the view. You'll never be disappointed. And so God is still in the life-changing business. God is still speaking. May we have the ears to listen. The last thing I want you to see is that we must believe in God to do great things. Believe in God to do do great things. Now, imagine that you are Ezekiel. God is there, but you can't physically see him. And, And then Ezekiel begins to preach. And as Ezekiel preaches, the bones move and come together. And then Ezekiel breathes God's spirit into them and they come to life. What a miracle. I heard a story of a man who was walking through a dark cemetery one night and he fell into an open grave which had been dug for a graveside the next day. He screamed and yelled, but there was no one to hear him. He jumped and he tried to reach the top and to get out, but he could not reach it. He clawed and tried to make steps in the dirt so that he could get out, but to no avail. Finally, he sat down in the corner and decided to wait until the morning when they would find him when they came to put the casket in the ground. But along came another man walking along the same way and he also fell into the grave. The first man simply sat in the corner and watched as the second man tried to get out. He he yelled for help and he tried to climb out but to no avail. Finally, in sympathy, the first man said to the second, you can't get out of here. Oh, but the second man did. (laughs) You see, we have some experience with death. We have probably said goodbye to some friends and loved ones. I have, and you probably have too. We have been through tough times. We may be in them now as we try to decide about our future. But what we do know is that there is hope. Who of us at one time or another has not stood amidst the ruins and remnants of our dreams dashed to the ground? Maybe our hopes didn't come out as we had hoped. One of the most devastating parts of such an experience is not simply that we have fallen or that we have been broken. It is fear that we can never revive and go back to the same level. Whatever the question, the same thing runs across our minds. Can these bones live? The scripture clearly tells us that God can do great things, that if God can bring dry bones to life, then certainly he can give us hope. We must believe in God to do great things. Ezekiel did. And look what happened. I want you to notice that even when the bones were together, they were still missing one thing. Wind, spirit, breath. These are words which come from the same Hebrew word, ruach. I taught you some Hebrew today, ruach. And they are mean the same thing. It means wind, breath, spirit, all in that same word. We still use that word that way today. We talk about a second wind when we run and run and we need that help to keep on running. We talk about being inspired as a breath of fresh air. So what we are saying is that in the midst of our own experiences, despite how tired we are, how devastated and desolate we might feel, what we know is that there is a breath that comes from whence we know not, unless we are persons of faith. Then we know that it is God working in and through us 
and that God has been faithful. That no matter how old our bones may be, we are not destroyed. We live. I heard about an old sailor who was standing on a dock with a little boy and they were looking out over the lake and they were watching the sailboats out on the, the lake for the day. The little boy asked the older man, Sir, what is the wind? And the sailor said, Son, I can't tell you what the wind is. I can't explain it, but I know how to hoist a sail to catch its power so it can take me where I want to go. So it is for me. I cannot explain the breath of God. I cannot explain the Holy Spirit which is in us. But I have felt its power. And I know that it is real. I believe it is present for us. Regardless of the circumstances in which we find ourselves, God is with us. And so I'd like to encourage you to hoist a sail and to catch the wind. To open your heart and Breathe deep and allow God's spirit to come in to your dry bones and mine. That is the word of the Lord. You can trust it. There is still breath for dry bones. So we've been talking about tragedy and triumph. And the tragedy is that there are dry bones in our lives. The tragedy is that it was the worst of times for the people of Israel. But the triumph is that there is hope for all of these dry bones. Hope through the power of God. When we come alive to God, when we are obedient, when we listen for God to speak, and when we believe in God to do great things. I had some unexpected visitors come to my office on Thursday, and we talked for a while, and we were talking about what I was preaching on Sunday and I said well I'm not sure why the congregation is there to be honest with you because I think this sermon is for me that um, with all that has been going on with the decline in attendance with some members leaving with the discernment process I've had a hard time finding hope and maybe some days I still do but this is what I believe is that God is not done with us yet. That there is still hope for the hopeless. That the dry bones can live again. And so I would like to encourage you, where you feel hopeless, know that God is there to lead us and to guide us. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we pray that you would forgive us when our life feels nothing, we, all we feel like is dry bones. Lord, we think that there is no hope in this life, and we think that, Lord, where are you in the midst of our suffering and our pain? Instead, Lord, we pray that you would help us to come alive to your spirit, that you would fill us with the breath of your life, that we might have hope even in the darkest of times. Lord, we pray that you would help us to come alive to you by trusting in you, by allowing your Holy Spirit to come in and fill us. Lord, help us to be obedient even when we don't see that there's a way. Lord, help us to preach to the dry bones that they might come alive. Lord, we ask that you would help us, give us ears to hear you when you speak to us in so many different ways. Help us to find you when you come to us. And Lord, we believe that you are not done with us yet, that you can still do great things in and through us. And so we believe that there is hope even for the hopeless. And it's all these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. As we come to a time of response in our service, the altar is open if you'd like to come and pray. Maybe you know what it's like to have some of these dry bones. Maybe you have something in your life that feels like dry bones to you and you'd like to pray for God's Spirit to come and fill you. The altar is open if you'd like to come and pray, and I'll be glad to pray with you if you'd like for me to do so. I'd also be glad to talk with you about trusting in Christ as your Lord and Savior or to become a member of our church as we seek to follow Jesus in our community and beyond. Our closing hymn is number 451, Be Thou My Vision. Would you please stand as we sing together?
It has been good to see you in God's house today, and it is my prayer that where your bones are dry, God's spirit will fill you and sustain you. I do want to remind you to please sign up for the discernment small groups on your way out if you have not done so already, and I'd like to encourage you to participate in this process as we make important decisions about the future of our church. And now let us close in prayer. Oh Lord, we are so grateful for your power that fills us. Lord, we know that our bones sometimes feel dry. We know that sometimes this seems hopeless with all that's going on in our world and in our lives. But Lord, what we know is that you have the power to do great and mighty things. And so we pray that you would fill us with your spirit, that your breath would be in us, and that others would see Jesus in us through all that we do and say. And so, Lord, as we go into this week, we pray that you would go with us. Fill us with your spirit and your breath, that we might have hope even when things seem hopeless. And it's all these things we ask in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.